Here we go. I think you guys are going to like today. I think you're going to like today. There's a lot to learn. So as a quick review, and also, Sydney, I'm going to make sure I hide that little alert. We learn as we go, don't we? Um, there we go, group. You're looking at what you're looking at this little graphic that we made yesterday. And what did we learn yesterday? We learned that 1 million is a big number, right? It's an overwhelming number, but it starts to get less overwhelming when we turn this, I like that tip earlier, snackable. We turn this into snackable, bite-sized food analogies. We turn this into bite-sized goals. So 1 million a year works out to be $83,000 a month. We're talking about building a million dollar brand. So I'm basing everything today on that 1 million goal. So what does that mean? Monthly, roughly $83,000 a month. That to me and probably to you still feels like a huge number. That number feels huge. So how do we then take it and make it even more achievable? less overwhelming. And so my approach to this is, is, is what you're looking at, what I've designed this little graphic here in Adobe Express. Four levels, we reviewed this yesterday. What are those four levels? Very quickly, your first level is a small offering. So what we're showing here are your value offerings. So small, this is anything less than $100, let's say, I would call that small in comparison to the others. So an example to hit our monthly goal of 20,000, we got four levels, add them up, that's roughly 80, you need a little more 83,000 total, but we're keeping it simple math. Well, what do you need to do to satisfy this tier or this goal? This is review from yesterday, let's say you have a $30 subscription, if you sell 700 of those, we hit our $20,000 a goal. Now, medium, this is $100 to $1,000. Let's say, for example, we have a $500 product. How many of those do we need to sell? Roughly 41 to hit that $20,000 goal. If you're looking at this going, wait, that doesn't make sense, go back and watch part one. Part one, we'll link to this in the chat, Sydney. Um, Cindy will handle this. Also, if you're RSVP, you should have a link handy to part one if you missed it. In part one, I go through very tangible examples of each tier. So we're not going to cover that today because we've got some tactics to go through today. So let's keep going. That large offering is anything from $1,000 to $5,000. What do we need to sell to make this work? Let's say we offer a creative services retainer, okay? Uh, so that means essentially people are prepaying for your time, your time to work on something. This is common in my business, common in a lot of creative businesses. I know a lot of users of Adobe Express and in our community, a lot of creativity. So I try to stick within that lane, that example. How many $3,000 retainers would you need to sell? You'd need to sell about seven, let's say, okay? And in this final stage, what we called yesterday VIP, anything $5,000 or more, I gave you some examples. It could be a coaching program. Maybe it's a three or a six month coaching program. Maybe there's a retreat at the end to sweeten the deal. I mentioned that now we're starting to see things pop up more frequently in person, which is nice and refreshing for many of us. Uh, if it's a $6,000 program or retreat, you'd need to sell four of these to hit that monthly goal. You add all these up monthly, that equals a million dollars a year. We're talking about creating a million dollar brand. That is your little review. So now let's talk about tactics. I'm going to walk through five in the time that we have. I'm going to aim to. Time goes by very quickly in these half an hour snackable sessions. If I don't get through all of them, I post on Instagram at today, uh, today a carousel with Adobe Express um, that goes through all of these steps. We're going to get through as many steps as we can in the time that we have. By the way, Sydney, feel free to interrupt me at any point. I'm just going to power through. If you see a good question, Sydney, if you see a good question, go ahead and interrupt me. You have full permission. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. Tip number one, okay, or I should say step number one is identifying the problem. You need to figure out what problem you want to solve as a business, as a brand. This is going to require two things, competitive analysis. So a look at your industry and who else is doing what you do, direct competitors, people who do what you do and offer the same you know, service or product that satisfies the same need, indirect competitors they offer something a little bit different that still satisfies the same need. So a quick example, a direct competitor of a restaurant is another restaurant down the street. 
An indirect competitor is a food truck. Different product still satisfies the same need, hunger. Okay, so identify the problem. Really think about a competitive analysis. You can research online. I've made YouTube videos about this. Lots of resources on how to do a competitive analysis. I would say that's item number one. You also need intense listening skills. Intense listening skills. I said this on Instagram a few uh, minutes ago. I've noticed that brands who fail do two things. Overestimate their value and undervalue their audience. I'll say it again. I've noticed that brands who fail overestimate their value and undervalue their audience. So figure out what problem you wanna solve and I'm gonna give you a quick example of a client of mine that has done this very, very effectively. Leela Gurukul is how you pronounce that. I put the web address visible there so you guys can see it. I'll hop actually over to their website right now. This is a client of mine. I had the great pleasure of working with them to essentially build this brand from scratch. Uh, logo design, website, what you're looking at, I made, actually with the help of some graphic tools in Adobe Express. Leela is a modern spiritual uh, school, if you will. Uh, they wanted to provide an educational spiritual experience that went way deeper than meditation apps that are common on the market today. Um, they did that. They launched with great success. They continue to grow each time they launch a cohort. How did they do this? They're the best example I can think of for a brand that figured out a problem that they wanted to solve and then they built something to show for it. Very cool, right? Let's keep going because we are pretty short on time, but we've got a lot to cover. So um, here's what I want to talk about next. Step two, we're talking tactics to build a million dollar brand. I'm trying not to look at the chat because I know Sydney, you'll interrupt me if there's something important in there. Um, but we'll keep plugging along group because there's a lot I want to cover today. Step two, figure, or I should say find your ideal audience and grill them. I'll explain what I mean by that. You need to effectively abandon all assumptions that you make about who you think your audience is. And you gotta be humble in this process and go back to square one, if you will. Approach with a mindset of curiosity. Pretend like you know nothing. That's really important. Don't go into here with, with an ego. Don't go into here thinking you know exactly who your audience is because I think any business owner could revisit this question and get value from revisiting this question. The most important thing you can do is listen to your audience. Listen to their problems, listen to their hopes, listen to their dreams, the brands they love, what a day in the life of, you know, in an ideal world, what that looks like for them. And I would say the most important advice I can give you in this stage is to actually talk to people. Do not sit behind your computer and concoct all of these ideas without actually having a conversation with someone. Talk to 10 people. You know what's better than that? Talk to 20 people. I honestly think you need to talk to at least 20 people before starting a business or before repositioning your business, right? Revisiting the stage of, of positioning your brand, right? Building a product or service that satisfies a need, finding your ideal audience. You need to talk to people, at least 20 people, figure out how you can deliver the exact solution for their problem. It's kind of like business one-on-one -on -one here. By the way, how cool are these like minimalist designs? Thank you, Adobe Express. I, um, I literally, I said, yeah, I admitted this to you. I didn't think I was gonna admit this to the whole group, but I literally made these slides this morning. And if it weren't for Adobe Express, um, it would not have taken a short sliver of time to design graphics for a presentation the day of. Not proud of that, but I am a little bit last night. I need that pressure. It yeah, is a little exactly bit of a pressure cooker. And you clearly work well under pressure because these are beautiful. Sydney, I don't do anything if there isn't pressure. So <laughs> I want to, I feel like while we're talking about Adobe Express, can I show you guys two of my favorite features in this app, which helped with this presentation? First one is shapes, okay? This is newer actually. When I started um, as an ambassador for Adobe Express, this had not launched yet. It launched pretty short thereafter, but this is where I go. If you guys like the flat minimalist design of my slides, we talked yesterday about how I add my colors. You can actually set up your brand colors 
right in Adobe Express, so they are literally at your fingertips. Um, to see those, I would go ahead and click on an element, and right away, right where you would adjust the color for that. See, Phil Palin, I have my brand set up right here. It's showing some colors from the template that I created from, so I'm not gonna worry about those in this case, but right away, I can literally grab and color um, my element. It could be typography, it could be an icon. I was showing here here shapes, so basic shapes. I hop in here all the time. You're gonna see me deleting, I have overlays to leave some suspense and surprise while I move through my slides. But I use these all, they look a little happy face. I use these all the time. There are so many amazing emoji type or icon, iconography. Um, when, I, when people ask me, Phil, why do you like Adobe Express compared to other online graphic design tools? My answer is always the same. My answer is the level of sophistication that comes with Adobe Express is why I love it. I'm a bit of a design snob, but that's because I own a branding agency and I design for a living. Not only me, but my team. Clients hire me and they expect things to look good. And for me, Adobe, not just Express, but many of the, you know, the, the, the flagship, let's call them, um, Adobe products I use within my agency and my business and my day to day. And you can tell this was designed by Adobe because everything is top notch. So I'll, I'll um, as I move through this material group, I'm gonna try and shed some light on how I design this and how I design, because I do presentations and stuff like this all the time, and I'll, I'll talk about that as we go through. And, and Phil, so we talked, I yeah. Have a question um, from Nav. How do you know the value you are generating is actually helpful for your audience? So that's a really good question, and there's not a simple answer for that, but the best piece of advice I can give you at this early stage is to talk to people. It's a little bit like applying for a job. It's easier and safer to sit behind our computer and fill out an online application with a thousand other people and not have a conversation or not hit the ground running. Go to a store or a place that you want to work and actually show up. You know what I mean? Like, I would say don't play it safe. Don't sit behind your computer and concoct all of these ideas. Certainly you can use the internet for research, but it's super important that you have a conversation with someone. That's what I'm going to say. That's the advice I'm going to give. And I think we're afraid to. I think certainly, you know, the internet has made things easier, but technology will continue to evolve. But the thing that's not going to change is human interaction, the humanization of brands and interaction that will not change. So the really, it, it's about making a connection. And we can talk about more, you know, more of that in the Q and A. It's a really good question. Let's keep going. Shall we get to point number three? I think we should. Point number three is um, determining your value offerings at the four different tiers that we talked about. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this today because we're short on time and we spent half an hour on this yesterday, but what I will do is jump back to this graphic, um, take a screenshot of this if you want, uh, if you haven't already, this is really handy. It's showing you on the left the different levels, right? We Small, medium, large, VIP, we talked about those and the rough price ranges that I assigned for each of those. And then on the right, in this example, this slide today is showing you what you would need to sell at that tier to hit that goal. You need to figure out what those offerings are. We talked, there's some good questions about this in the live and in the replay chat here on Crowdcast. People asking, what about some examples for my business? And we had some great en engagement yesterday. We didn't have time to to give an example of every business. But again, yesterday's replay will give you examples at each of those levels, from eBooks to programs, retreats, SMS subscription, email subscription, premium. We talked about lots of examples to fill in the gaps here. So you really need to figure out, step number three, determine your value offerings. Spend some time and do some research. This you can do online um, to see what other creators in your space might be doing. It doesn't mean copy anyone, but you can be strongly inspired by what others are doing well. Determine your value offerings. Any questions on that? If not, I'm gonna keep on trucking along, keep on trucking along. Tip number four group, Oh, go ahead, Sydney. You're muted. Classic. I can see you talking. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've all done it. Um, we do have a question, not particularly pertaining to this, um, but from Angel. 
and maybe we answered a little closer to the end, um, not to disrupt the flow, but just maybe something sure. to think about is when working with brands, how does writing up a contract work? Where would I start? Okay, that's a really good question. And since I'm not a lawyer or an attorney, I can't really give sound advice step by step on how to do that since I'm not necessarily qualified or trained to do it. But I will tell you, every client I work with or every sponsored content partnership that I have, the brand or I will provide a contract. And if it's significant, you know, I'd say if it's a thousand dollars or more, I will always have an attorney take a look at it. If it's pretty simple and it's pretty standard and it's for a few hundred dollars, let's say I'm a smaller creator. I mean, I, I speak, I've delivered keynotes on five continents, but for me, doing content partnerships, which is what you mentioned, um, is new for me. This is something I've only done for about two years. So I'm still small. My audience is smaller than other bigger you know, creators. But still, if it's a significant deal, I'll always have a, uh, a lawyer look at a contract before I sign it. Um, if it's smaller and it's straightforward, you might be comfortable signing it. In that case, I'll always have my business partner who's not a lawyer, but she's a little bit more lawyer minded than me. I'll always have her look at it to just give a sign off. It's always good to have a second opinion before signing off on something. But if it's a significant deal, there's money behind it. It's worth the fee that a, a lawyer or an attorney will charge to have their eyes on it there. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, that was perfect. Good. Let's talk about step four. We what were you going to say? What are you going to say, Sydney? We have about seven more minutes left. Um, Perfect. I'll let you keep flowing. And if we don't continue to ask those questions, drop them in the question pod. But if we don't get to them, we do. Phil and I will be going live on Facebook right after this. So um, don't worry. We'll get all your questions answered at some point today. Thank you for plugging that. Can you put in the chat where people can go on Facebook? In fact, you might have already done it. But let's put it again so it's a fresh link in the chat. Said so if you can do that, that way people know exactly where to go. We had some technical challenges with our Q&A yesterday. I'm looking over on this screen because Sydney, I have you on this screen, but I'm going to look here. Um, we had some technical glitches, but today we're not going to have them. We're going to see you over there, and that's where we can go into more detail. It's a little more casual. Uh, we can do a Q and A, and I can give you examples for your business. Step number four: build a community. A community. Sydney's going to put the link. There we go. She's going to there. There it is. That's the Facebook link to go over uh, where we're going to be right after this. A community gives you a direct line to the people that are most likely to buy from you because they know, like, and trust you. Building a community is a way to listen to your ideal audience and give them what they want. People are naturally social. And if they feel included in your community, this could be on social media, this could be by email marketing, it could be people you keep in touch with after an in-person event or a networking session, Right? If people feel included, they are willing to pay for access to your product. If they know, like, or trust you, they're willing to put money behind access to you. And I feel like now is a good time for, for a quick story, a quick example. So when I talk about building a million dollar brand, Julie Bauer Roth of Paley OMG is probably my most solid example of someone who has achieved that milestone yearly mark. She doesn't talk about it because she's humble and down to earth and amazing. Um, I freaking love her. She's one of our favorite clients and she is so lovable and she's the best example of someone that has built a community. By the way, group, do you see that QR code? Go ahead, if you have your mobile device handy, you can actually open your camera app and go to her website by hovering or almost like as if you're gonna take a picture of it um, on your phone. If you, if you take, you don't actually have to click to take a picture, but it'll hi hyperlink that QR code um, if you wanna have a look at it. And that is something I literally made in, how fast did I make that? About 30 seconds. Where did I make that group? Adobe Express, how did I do it? We call it a quick action. Oh yes, try a quick action. So right here on the homepage, this will give you popular quick actions. I use these all the time. Remove background, resize image, convert to a GIF or a GIF. Pronunciation on that is very polarizing. Everyone has an opinion. Um, 
convert to MP4 video, trim video, resize video. These are like quick, I don't, you know, quick action is a perfect thing to call them because they're quick little things that you need to do, but sometimes you don't know how to do. Creating a QR code, this is new in Adobe Express and I'm frankly obsessed with it. Have a look, click this. You know, QR codes, it was kind of like before the pandemic, people, they were kind of phasing out, like people weren't using them as much. They were trendy for a while because they were first popular in Asia and then we didn't see much of them. And then the mobile menu at restaurants, I think brought this back single-handedly, right? And so now we're used to using them again and they are very convenient to use in your marketing. Now, if you've ever wondered how to make them, you know where to make them. You would just set a URL here. Here we go. And then you can choose a color here. They've also got different styles. That's kind of cool. And I would just literally click create QR code and download. It is that simple. That was how I did it. We were talking a second ago about uh, Julie Bauer Roth is the best example of someone who's created a community. I'm not gonna give you more info than that because you can go to her Instagram. It's at Paley OMG. Her stories, the way that she makes us feel included, she talks to us like she's our best friend. There's absolutely no one better at creating community online. Julie has sold over a million dollars in about a year and a half just in fitness programs. That doesn't include any other business verticals in her business. Just in fitness programs sold on Instagram to her community zero ad spend, which is absolutely incredible. I talk a lot about her and our content because she is my client that keeps me the busiest. Group, we have one more takeaway that I wanna leave with you um, in the time that we have, and then we'll hop over. Yeah, we're getting close to time. Number five, create a branded experience. Create a branded experience. There is absolutely no better place to create a branded experience than Adobe Express. Um, here we go, look. look, look at our little logo down there. Um, Adobe Express is where you can create a branded experience. Any online uh, design, any print design, this platform, this app, desktop mobile gives you access to create something beautiful quickly. You do not need to be a graphic designer. Um, in fact, it's made for people that are not graphic designers. Here's my last piece of advice on this as we wrap up. Your cheapest products need to feel valuable. Your most expensive offering needs to make your customer or buyer feel taken care of. Simply put, creating a branded experience puts your customer first. That's step number five. Today we talked about tactics on how to build a million dollar brand. Hopefully these five tactics that we went through quickly with examples give you some food for thought. How's everyone feeling? I'm feeling great. I think right now we'll take one more question. Perfect. And we can hop over to Facebook Live, hang out with you guys. It'll be relaxed. It'll be fun. We'll answer some more questions. They can be a little bit more personal because um, we'll have a little bit more time there. So yes, we will. Let's start with Dora. Community is extremely important. What is the best way to find folk, folks in your niche? Mm, that's a great question. There's so many ways to do that nowadays. I think social media has probably given us unprecedented access to be able to find like-minded people or people based on interests. Um, why don't I give Instagram as an example? That's probably an app that most people watching this have downloaded or use as part of their business. Instagram really, I mean, Lots of people complain about it and complain about the updates and complain about the features and et cetera. But I would say Instagram really gives us amazing tools to be able to find a niche or a niche. That's another pronunciation. Um, polarizing, you know, people pronounce it differently. Canada, we say niche. I'm Canadian living in America, but we say niche and people here say niche. What do you say, Sydney? Niche or niche? I say niche. Niche. Okay. You're like me. Okay. I see. Yeah. Um, a niche sounds like something you'd find in your hair that you don't want. You know, I just don't like that word. Um, so, so uh, hashtags, if you don't want to explore hashtags, uh, filter by location, see what users are posting at the coffee shop you love to go to or the dog park for Dura. Um, you know, who else is active at the dog park that you're visiting? Dura is building a brand about dogs. So that's why I mentioned that example. Um, really, I think Instagram is one example of how you can find people independent of like geographical challenges or limitations. Now it, geography matters less. Now it's all about niche, brand, interest, hobby. Great, I love it. 
And unfortunately, our time today has come to an end here. But if you still have questions for Phil and myself, or you just want to hang out with us, we are going to hop over to our Adobe Express Consider Facebook group to go live. I'm going to drop that link in there one more time. Um, and we're going to go there to continue the conversation in a, a much more relaxed and fun manner. Um, and then we will hopefully see you there. And if we don't see you there, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you, group. We appreciate your time. Thank you for hanging out with us. And definitely check out Adobe Express if you haven't yet. You must. You must. All right. Take care, everyone.